Welcome, my friends. This is your host, Seishu, and thanks and welcome to, again to joining us at Tiffin Box TV. I am here with my friend, Christine Cremoulet, who is based in Houston, but I tell you what, she loves to travel, and we all know it. Uh, if you've been following Christine at all, you know she's been in, in Canada and beyond, and now she's back in Houston and has launched a wonderful program for photographers and creative people alike that will teach you how to blog and it's called blogging brilliantly and it's at bloggingbrilliantly.com and I wanted to talk to her because blogging is one of those things that I absolutely think is essential for photographers uh, especially if you're just starting out this is the the time to actually get into it and Christine has this beautiful free 30-day course that's been going on for the last I don't know how many days now but I've been receiving these free emails thank you Christine <laughs> um, and I've been learning a ton of stuff from you so uh, I just wanted to have you on because I wanted to, to see what you may be able to tell my audience a little bit more about blogging and why it's so important so thanks and welcome oh thank you um, and just in case your audience doesn't know I launched my wedding photography business in 2007 I uh, then was a boudoir photographer for several years, and um, my geek claim to fame, I've actually blogged for 15 years, so I started blogging back in 2000. Uh, my geek claim to fame, I saw you smiling because I know you know it, my geek claim to fame is that I named WordPress. So I've been using the power of blogging for a long, long time. Um, and the course isn't so much about teaching you how to, like there's nothing in there about how to install WordPress or how to put a plugin in place, but more just the, the reasons why you should blog for your business, overcoming the fears that come up for people about blogging. A lot of people are afraid, like what if I write a blog post and nobody reads it? You know, that's, right. that's probably the biggest fear that comes up for people. Um, and then uh, helping people go through and you know come up with ideas of things that you can write about. Photographers, I, I love you, I love you. So I had to retire for last year from shooting. My shoulder, I was supposed to have a shoulder surgery the same year that I launched my photography business and I still haven't had it. So um, my shoulder is, is pretty much, my rotator cuff is pretty trash. So it's really hard for me to hold a camera for several hours at a time now. Uh, but more importantly, I realized that the the biggest thing I loved about being a photographer was helping other photographers grow their business and use the power of the internet to grow it. I think being a photographer the last three or four years I was doing it was really an excuse to get to hang out with other photographers and help them grow their brand online. I, the, one of the things I've enjoyed uh, hearing from you, even you know when we're just hanging out, is just the... Uh, you know the, the very simple, clear tone of like, here I, I'm happy to t I'm happy to help you, happy to guide you. You don't come across as this uh, like I know it all kind of person. You're just sort of like this. Let me guide you through this process kind of person, right. and that's what I've always enjoyed about working with you or even just talking to you. Uh, and these these email blasts that I've been getting every day now speak to me like in that same manner. They they have that same sort of like. Here's why you should check this. I'm, I'm looking at welcome to day 14, uh, five <laughs> simple tips to make lazy readers stay on your blog. And, you know, it's these kinds of little nuggets that I think people are going to get if they sign up, of course, uh, that would help them really stand out. I think that's that's really key. I think and, and I think when people start to see people coming to their website, engaging with them, they're going to blog more often. And I think this is what's happened with Tiffin Box too. You know, I, I keep doing it. I keep blogging there only because I can. <laughs> I keep getting more people engaged there. So Right. The biggest thing that we do as photographers, and I include myself in it, I'm totally guilty of it too. Well, first of all, to address what you said, there's many ways to achieve the same goal. Absolutely. You know, there, I don't. I don't have like, this is the one and only way you should do anything. I, I don't. I don't believe that way. I and I really try and seek out like if this isn't the way that works for you, what's going to be the way that does work for you? I have several one-on-one -on -one coaching clients that I help them with getting their business online and improving their reach and that's always my goal with them. Um, one of the things that we all tend to do is we write these blog posts. Here's my favorite 
clients I've ever had. These are my favorite clients. And here's 10 photos from my, my favorite session ever. Right. And your post a week later is exactly the, the same, same thing yeah. Yeah. of my favorite clients. And you know what? Not everybody can be your favorite clients. <laughs> you know, so we need to stop writing it this way. And the other thing is there's a weird, like, like a little psychological thing that happens when you're, um, Back in December, I went to shop for a family portrait photographer for our family in Kentucky. So I was in Lexington, Kentucky, and I didn't know anybody in the market. And we were talking about giving my in-laws a large family portrait. Everybody's going to be in town. Let's hire somebody. So, of course, I was put in charge of finding that photographer. So, so fascinating being on the other side of the lens or, you know, the other side of the keyboard, really. Right, right. Because nobody's website stood out. They were all just telling me the same thing. This is my favorite client. Here's, here's five pictures I like from the session. And when you share your story and who you are and what makes you unique online, then you give me something to hold on to. You know, you give me something to connect with. You, you stand out from everyone else. Let me ask you this, Christine. Do you have to keep reminding people what it is that you do or what it is that, what it is that you are a specialist in? You and I, you know, have this common person in, in our lives. His name is Jeff Yoakum, and, and specialism is like the thing that works around everything that I do now. You know, I'm always thinking along the lines of, like, what, you know, how do I state what I, who I am first so that I can, I can connect with my, my audience? Is that something that you're going to be also incorporating within your, your, your course? Um, there's, it comes up in different times in sure. the course. Okay. Because you don't need to keep reminding people on your photography website that you're a photographer. Exactly. They know that. Yeah. They showed up for that. Right. right. Um, you're showing photos. You've, you're telling people, here's how you work with me. Um, so you don't need to keep telling them, hey, I'm a photographer. You also, you don't need to have your camera and your avatar photo on Facebook because, again, they know you're a photographer. You set the camera down. Um, <laughs> just, recent, just recently, I came across somebody, not in the photography world, it's actually in an entrepreneur forum that I'm on. And uh, on her website, she has that she's a photographer, but you could also hire her because she's a yoga teacher. And somebody was berating her. Like I said, I don't believe that there's just one way to do anything. And so somebody else was like, this is wrong. You should only have one thing on your website. And I responded with, well, what if she said, hire me to be your wedding photographer. But by the way, I am a certified yoga instructor. And before your wedding day, we'll do yoga together. And um, your wedding party and I, and we will do a 20 minute yoga session so that everybody's in a calm, relaxed state and in the right place of mind. This doesn't resonate for me. I've never done yoga in my life. But for a person that does yoga, how awesome would that be? And that's a great way that she could stand out in exactly. her market among right. everyone else. Right. Uh, and when you attract the, your ideal clients and you attract the people that are like you, you end up working with people that you like. Uh, most of us are not running large studios where we want to have 800 clients a year. I know a few people that do that. Uh, but most of us are working solo. Uh, some people are working nights and weekends as a photographer and they have a day job. You don't want to give up your spare time in those cases. Or, you know, if, if this is your dream job, make it your dream you get to do that. That's the joy of being an entrepreneur. Indeed. So. Indeed. And, and, and blogging helps because it sort of enables you to tell your story in a beautiful sort of structured way um, uh, that helps build credibility in, uh, in, in the client's eyes. Uh, you know, given that it's also good for SEO, you know, everyone knows that. Best part. Yeah, that's the best part. You know, you're... you're <laughs> website ranks higher because of blogging um and clearly you know it sort of taps that side of your brain that you know that really is the creative side anyway so why not why not try and use it so um and i'm gonna borrow my iphone 6 as my example here sure uh 50 years ago 
you know, going way back, long before the internet, if you had a storefront, people walked into your store and you talked to them, you connected with them as a person. And right now what I see a lot of people do is they go, hello, I have this phone, it is for sale. Or in our case, I have photographs, don't you want me, me to take photographs of you? I have photographs, you're not connecting with people. But through blogging, um, it's okay on your business blog to actually share who you are personally. That takes you from just being the person showing off the product for sale to being the person that you're connecting with people because that's really how a store works. If you think about your favorite local stores, not the chains, but the local stores, you probably shop at them. Like I love knowing that when I go to the restaurant just down the street, the owner knows me. Right. And sometimes he comes up from behind the counter and gives me a hug. And we he tells me about his bourbon trip that he went on or his shopping. You know, he went shopping in Kansas City to find great barbecue sauces to carry or whatever. But he's telling me these other stories that share his passion with me. And they have very little to do with the restaurant that he's running. They're not actually meant to bring me into the restaurant but they're meant to connect me with him. And why should I want to talk to him? What makes him special? And that is the best thing about the blog. Uh, we, I, I think one of the things that we haven't talked about is uh, so much of us, so much of our lives is uh, distracted, busy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and a blog is has a way of uh, centering the attention on one place. It gives us a, a bit of focus uh, but it also, in a way, allows us to scale. I think one of the things we don't really appreciate so much about our websites is that, is that you know, it's it's a one-hit kind of thing. Like people come, visit, and boom, they're gone. But a blog has a, a, the capacity to give people a, a chance to get to know you, etc., and for them to also tell other people, Check it out. Come check out what this guy is all, go, or this woman's all doing, out. right? Go check it out, right? Um, and, and there's there's something to the blog that they can actually come back and seek seek you know sink their teeth into, right? Right. Um, I'm always telling people your blog should be the center of your social media universe. Like it should be the sun that mm -hmm. every other aspect of social media rotates around. Uh, things on Facebook. Uh, I was told yesterday, and I haven't gone back and researched it, but that like, it's like they have a 55-minute lifespan on Facebook. They probably have a 10-minute lifespan on Twitter. Uh, Instagram is shorter. They may have a longer lifespan on Pinterest. If something gets picked up on Pinterest, it tends to get repinned, mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll keep showing. Um, now people are starting to use Periscope. That only has a 24-hour life. You do a Periscope recording, and it's gone the next day. So all of these things are short. Unless you embed it into your blog. Right, right. And <laughs> that's actually, kind of cool. I made a point of down, I've done a few Periscopes, sure. and I made a point of downloading them with that intention, like, right. oh, I can use this later. Um, but all of those things have a short lifespan, whereas your blog, if, first of all, you can s be smart and set up systems around your social media. So if you have a great blog post that got a lot of engagement and it's evergreen content, you know, meaning it lives forever, it's not time sensitive, you can keep sending people back to that blog post right. over and over and over again. Um, I, I, I use CoSchedule for my own blog. It's a WordPress plugin. I believe you can use it for Squarespace too to schedule your future post and probably other services. But it's integrated really well into WordPress. And when I write a post, I say, okay, now share this post today on Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Share it again tomorrow on Twitter. Right. Share it again tomorrow evening on Twitter. Share it in a week on Twitter. And share it again in a month on Twitter and Facebook. Because it can live on. People will keep, and we all have short memory spans. Like Facebook and Twitter are drinking from straight from a fire hydrant. We are so flooded with information. So instead, you, if you show it to people multiple times, it's not like Facebook. If you write a huge long blog post on Facebook, after about a week, Facebook may or may not even show it to people. 
And people tend to come to your blog and they dig through your archives. They go from link to link. They might look at an entire category. Uh, maybe you're a wedding photographer and you tagged a wedding venue. They might click that tag and view every other wedding venue or everything else you've done at that wedding venue. But they're going to explore so much more than they are on social media. And I'm not saying social media doesn't matter, but we should put more focus on our blog and less on social media. Like it should be secondary. And for most of us, that's not the case. For most of us, we flip it the other way around. Indeed. So tell me, you know, we've heard from you a little bit about the, the why of blogging and the how of blogging. Uh, but one question that I keep receiving all the time is what do I blog about? You know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to write about. Um, you know, it's as simple as writing a sentence, of course, but and then writing another sentence and, and another one all the way down. But most people just don't have the capacity even to start. They don't okay. understand that a blog uh, should probably have a structure to it. And then and uh, perhaps not a quite a template, but definitely a structure. What do you think? Well, no. When you start to write a post, think about what's the story I want to tell. Um, Amanda Lamb just sent me a message yesterday. She's a photographer over in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And she had one single photo. She had a personal story about it. It was nothing to do with what was happening in this wedding photo, but it was more what that wedding photo meant to her. Mm -hmm. And um, she messaged me, she, or she posted on my Facebook wall. She's like, this would have been a Facebook post. And instead I put it on my blog. And it's on track to be my, it was, she said it was on track to be her most visited post because it was about her personally. So um, another person that has always done this really well is Jennifer Cheney, who she'll post a f client photo, um, maybe like of their little boy trying to reach the sink. But then she'll talk about how her own son is growing up and how she knows these moments in her own life are fleeting. So find what your story is. You know, Sometimes tell their story. If you do tell their story, make sure that they're okay with the story that you're telling. Right. Um, I used to do that with my wedding clients is I would maybe give the, have them uh, tell me the story of how they met and if we use significant locations in their engagement session, I would then share, this is how they met and this is why we did their engagement session there. Um, but we all have story. Even It doesn't matter how boring you think your life is. You're, it isn't. Um, it's just a matter of being comfortable with be, finding that vulnerability in yourself, finding what you're okay, being vulnerable, putting out there and sharing it. Tell us a little bit more about your course at the moment that, that you're running. What, how long is it for? Uh, is it something that people can actually buy? I know there is there is an option to buy the entire course and get worksheets and things like that. Tell us where one can find all that information. Uh, so you can, the quick and easy, I know Christine Tremolay is hard to spell. Uh, so I made a quick and easy to access URL. So you can access it at bloggingbrilliantly.com. And when you sign up initially, it's free. It's 30 days of emails that come to you. So you just sign up, put in your email address and hit submit and you're signed up. As soon as you sign up though, and at different times during the course too, you can choose to upgrade. It's $27 right now for the upgrade and you get a PDF of all 30 days of prompts and one nice you know, PDF that you could keep on your iPad, you could print, you could do whatever you wanted with. Um, and it also comes with a editorial calendar creation guidebook, four additional worksheets to help you write you know, your about page, figure out your ideal client, who are you talking to, um, blog post prep, and checklist of what to do when you write your blog post, what are the other things you should do to promote it. And like I said, that's $27. There's also opportunities to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. You said a lot of people get stuck on, well, what do I write about? Right, right. I have... I have one-on-one, -on -one, uh, just like one-time coaching clients where we set up like a 90-minute call and go through what are some of these things that you could write about, brainstorming ideas, and getting you to a list. My ultimate goal on every one of those calls is that people have a list of at least 40 items that they could write posts about. Um, if you're posting once a week, you only need 52. So There you go. 
Exactly. If we can come up with 30 or 40, you've got at least half of the year done, and they'll probably spawn more ideas for the rest of the year. Fantastic. Now, so, and, and this is a tremendous value for 27 bucks. <laughs> I it's, was just it's, saying, you emailed me like, wait, are you serious? Yeah, I had to because <laughs> you, I was baffled. I was like, what are you doing, Christine? <laughs> Uh, and the fascinating thing is, since I've been blogging for 15 years, right. as as I was building this with my assistant that helped me create, uh, like she helped me with the technical side of it, just getting things put, in, you know, copy pasting things into place. But as we were working on it, I at one point in time had a list of 50 or 60 items. Like I actually pulled items out, and even I'm also receiving the emails because I'm working back through them myself at the same time. Because your blog, it's a never-ending thing. It is always living and growing and breathing. So I've been working through the emails too, and I'm like, oh, I could do another email about this. So I'm actually launching a podcast uh, called Business Brilliantly. And uh, there's a Business Brilliantly Facebook group to go with it. But that's actually where ultimately like some of those tips are going to come up. It does, uh, it's so second. I, it's not second nature to me in a dismissive way. But this is things I've been doing for 15 years to grow my business tremendously. I was fully booked my first year of weddings because people were finding my personal blog. They, they were reading my business blog and then they were Googling me and finding my personal blog, too, and showing up and saying, you know, I like you so much and I like who you are. So if we bring that personal back into right. our businesses, indeed, it changes everything. So my last question to you is this, I, and I think most people will, will be happy to jump off and go and find <laughs> your incredible resource uh, at bloggingbrilliantly.com. But my question to you, my last question to you is this. I mean, in terms of focus, in terms of, uh, in terms of being able to present your business online and through a blog, you've, you've already said speaking about your personal life is okay. Uh, <laughs> clearly, posting things that are business-oriented is obviously okay. Uh, but when it comes to the business side, do you suggest that one stick to one genre of photography versus a multiple? That's a sticky question. Um, I, for the majority of people, find it is best to stick to one genre of photography, to the one that speaks to you, that you can relate to, that moves you the most, that you can stand out as the expert in that area. Over the years of coaching and mentoring people, I have come across one or two people that truly, they couldn't, they just literally could not give up the others. You know, they tried and they just, they were like, no, but I, you know, I want to photograph seniors and weddings and I, sometimes I like to photograph pets and we need generalists for the specialists to stand out. So it's okay if you really want to photograph everything under the sun or maybe you're new and you're trying to choose what your specialty is or you know, you're know you trying to go through. It's kind of a process of self-discovery happens a lot of times sure. with figuring out your specialty. Um, that's okay. It's okay if you haven't figured out what it is yet. Sometimes you need to try a few different things. Um, and, you know, some people go their whole photography career that way. And I'm not going to say that they're wrong. I think that you can charge more if you stand out as a specialist. My, you know, my orthopedic surgeon is going to charge me more than just the general physician. You know, can they both look at my shoulder? Yes, they can. But one is going to charge me a lot more to do it. Well, more than more, more important question is who are you going to trust more, really? Right. I'm not going to let the general physician go operate on my shoulder. That's right. <laughs> you know, but, you know, for some people, everything in this world, it just comes down to what somebody values for themselves. And for some people, they, you know, they want photography, but it is not the value of that level where they want the absolute, the expert in their area. So, you know, there's a market for everyone. Indeed. Cool. Uh, bloggingbrilliantly.com is where one can find your 
blogging course, I guess. It's, it is an evergreen blogging course that uh, will continue to inspire and motivate business owners, photographers, creative people to blog. And I think that's a, a phenomenal service in, in itself. And and, and as uh, Christine says, if you want it all in one shot, it's $27. It's a no-brainer in my mind. I don't make any money off of it, but uh, Christine's a friend of mine who's actually you know, really trying to help uh, business owners to actually up their game, and this is one easy way. It does take some effort, but it's an easy way to actually you know, get noticed in a very crowded marketplace. Thanks so much for joining me today, Christine. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.